How you doing? My name is Brandon with Prior Performance out of Minnesota. Um, we bring you guys all kinds of Baja Designs install kits, wiring, bracketry, uh, to install all these lights on different varieties of bikes. We do Road Glide, Street Glide, Road King, Indian Challenger, the new Lowrider ST, as well as some others. Um, the purpose of this video today is to show you an instruction guide, basically, uh, to install our new LP6 kit on these uh, Lowrider STs. So um, we have a couple customers who graciously loaned us two bikes um, to put do the R&D work on this, as well as uh, get you guys a video on how to install it, kind of take all the questions out. Um, just like any other time though, if you do have any questions, we're always available by phone, email, um, or DM. So let's get this thing fired up. We'll show you how to do this. All right, so to get this whole party started, we're gonna remove these six T27 bolts in the windshield here. Um, I like a T handle. You may wanna use a socket, but uh, we'll get these out of here and on to the next step. All right, here we go. We're gonna remove the uh, stock, stock headlight bezel slash trim ring. That uh, seems to be a point of concern for everybody. It's actually really easy to remove, hence why it's probably falling off on everybody. It's just a quarter turn to the left, counterclockwise. She pops right out. She's got these little lock tabs here. I don't know if you can see them. They're, uh, they leave a little bit to be desired by the looks of them. So then we're gonna get in here and we're gonna remove the T25 bolts. There are three of them around the uh, headlight carriage here. And we're gonna pull the entire headlight assembly out. Now you're gonna to wanna to pry up at this tab here, not too hard so it deforms. It's in there kind of snug. And we're gonna take our stock headlight assembly and set it aside, you won't need it anymore. All right, the next step is to remove the six, again, T27 bolts, one here, one here, one down here by your uh, diffuser and repeat on the other side. So that'll actually be the last of the outer fairing hardware. So we'll just work our way down. All right, at this point, you should be ready to remove your outer fairing. Make sure you take your stock headlight plug, tuck it in so you're not you know, getting caught up on it and nothing like uh, grabbing a painted part and tripping over a wire. So um, we have a piece of foam over here ready to go. A lot of guys use blankets or some soft towels just to make sure you don't mess up your finish on your paint. So we're gonna jockey that off and it just folds out like that. And we're gonna take her aside. All right, so this is your inner fairing. Um, basically, this model has no audio, so it'll be a little bit different than the models with the Rockford Fosgate audio. We'll go over that in a couple minutes. Um, we're gonna burn through this one, um, and it's very simple. You're gonna remove these zip tie stanchions for the turn signals off of this bracket here. Um, four half inch head hex bolts, and then one, two, Where'd they go? Three and four uh, T27 pieces of hardware and we're ready to move to the next step. So let me get on that. So the two zip ties here, we use a forked tool. Okay, those are clean and out of the way. And then your T27s.
And now the four half inch hex bolts. All right, so now all you gotta do is remove this bracket here. Um, this is like an interfering support bracket. Um, these tabs will be free. There's two hangers here that you need to get up and over. You're gonna need to apply a little bit of pressure up to clear, it's uh, being kind of held captive by these two spots here. So a little bit of upward. And she's out. So that's what uh, you'll be replacing with our kit. This bracket is a proprietary to this, and uh, we've recreated it for the LP6 setup. All right, so this is the Rockford Fosgate audio system. Um, I said we'd touch base on that. There's not a whole lot different on this. Um, the harness itself is different. This is an add-on harness, which pulls power for the Rockford setup. Um, the only thing you really need to be worried about is this clip here. We're just gonna pop that there, take that out. You will need to pop this piece of the harness out because that's going to go into our new bracket so we get it behind there and just pop her out she's on a christmas tree clip set that down and then there are an additional pair of t27s up here as well under these metal brackets our uh, new bracket has provision for that as well so we'll take all these out and move on to the half inch bolts I'll show you how to how to yank the audio kit out of the bike it's a lot easier to do it without it. All right, now that we've got all our hardware removed, uh, we removed the main harness. We're gonna remove the actual audio unit from the bike. Uh, free, there's a lot of interference here with the audio as far as the install of our bracket and the stock bracket alike. So we just slide that out. You got the whole neat little package there. We'll set that aside. You are free to grab that. Make sure all your wiring's out of the way. And the bracket clips right over top. So that's all, all you gotta do that's different than the non-audio bikes. All right, so just wanted to highlight basically our new bracket for the Lowrider ST versus the stock bracket. Um, this is the stock bracket, obviously. Um, it's just kind of supported on three sides. It's plenty sturdy. It flexes a little bit. You're not going to need to worry about that. We have beefed ours up a little bit. Just, you know, same deal. Want it to be strong. It's a lot heavier light hanging off of the front of it compared to stock. So we had that ring on the bottom there. Obviously, you got your mounting tabs. Um, dimensionally, they are identical outside of that mounting bracket for the lights. So, um, like I said, just wanted to highlight our bracket there, um, we've got a gentleman who does our fabrication, uh, did a hell of a job on this, Trevor, uh, bang up job as usual. And we'll uh, show you how to throw that in the bike and get the rest of the project done. All right, so uh, Harley leaves you with a lot of extra wiring, especially on the audio setups. So we just slapped a zip tie in there to hold the Harley harness to itself. We've also started feeding the battery whip of our harness through the interconnect there. And uh, we'll show you here. We just ran it out the side of the, the neck cavity here. We will show you uh, further down the video how to get it down to the battery. All right, so before we showed you, we ran the battery leads back through the side of the frame horn. Um, we also plugged in our headlight source plug. This is your stock leg. This is our new harness. So we're gonna set that back in there for now. The Deutsch plug for the LP6 light, we're gonna tuck through the side window. We wanna leave these uh, relays hanging, um, and I'll show you here why. We're gonna get make sure these are on the outbound of the turn signals, and just set that like so. So we're gonna take our bracket, and we're gonna hang it right over top of this, line up these tabs, and that's your, bra your hanger. So make sure she's nice and seated in there, kinda of clicked in. And then uh, we'll take uh, two bolts and tie up these relays. And we just use the stock mounting holes. And we'll get those started. I like to uh, 
I like to put all the hardware in loosely and then go back and tighten it up. Um, this is a very close fit. Everything fits well. I just you know, want to make sure we're not having any binding or anything else. So we'll get the last couple in. And uh, this would be a good time to point out for the Rockford Audio guys, there is a channel right here that goes all the way through uh, to run your plug wire for the audio. So you will just fold that up from behind and then you'll pin it in there. So get these all started. Four. And make sure your wiring's all loose. It's not pinched or bound up. So everything started in the, the half inch world. So we'll grab our T27 and start all these bolts. Now again, for you audio guys there, you're gonna utilize these outer bolts to bolt your Rockford system to. There's a tab that comes off of it that sits right on the face and you bolt straight through. We're not gonna use that for the non-audio side, but just, uh, just something to be aware of. Okay, now that everything's snugged in, we'll just make sure we're good here. We'll just snug it up at the bottom and the top. Make sure our wires are free moving and then we'll pretty much move on here. Got good motion there, not super tight. So we're gonna take our turn signal leads. They're kind of hidden behind the, behind the relay now. Just plug those Christmas trees back into the bracket. And we're, we're wired, so um, you're going to want your source plug back in. Um, I would take this here and zip tie it to your factory plug and leave your Deutsch connector hanging out. So I'll finish tightening up all these bolts and then we'll get the light and set her in there. All right. Well, now we're ready to plug in our light. Uh, we'll go ahead and just plug that Deutsch connector in there from the back. Positive click means you're in. Slide your light between the tabs. I always start with the pivot bolt in the front. Um, we do. We will be providing hardware for this pivot bolt, as it's. Uh, a flathead or you know tapered countersunk into the bracket it will be a touch shorter than this get those started there we go and we will be using a 3 16 allen from the back uh, again I'm just gonna get that started Now we'll set our adjustment. So I'm not going to get super technical on the adjustment of the headlight, but as a rule of thumb, they say 20 foot from the backside of a garage, you know, flat of a garage door. You want to be at the center of that panel on low beam. Um, that's pretty standard rule of thumb for headlight aiming. Um, your specific, you know, desires are a little up to you but i actually run a little bit lower these lights are so much brighter than this standard motorcycle halogen and you know shit even the leds that they come out come with now so i'm just gonna get this plugged in and get these snugged there we go i mean you can get a good eyeball for the time being. You're gonna need to obviously make that adjustment. All 
Okay, so the front pivot bolts are snug. The rear, we're gonna just give a quarter turn to for the time being. When we go back and adjust it, we're gonna, you know, tighten everything up. But she's in there rock solid. And that's your setup. Um, as far as the installation of the headlight, we got, we're gonna go back and cover the cutting of the fairing. Um, don't be too uh, scared or uh, intimidated by that. Um, if you were to cut the fairing in half, it only cost you about 400 bucks for a new painted version of it. So don't sweat it too much. Um, it's a very easy cut. We'll go over that here shortly and we'll show you how to do it. So. All right, so the next move we need to make here is to remove the tank. Obviously you can see I got the seat off if you need to know how to do that. This is probably not the video for you. So seat off, tank off, which is this through bolt nut as well as the same setup on the front. You don't need to remove the console on this one. There's nothing under there that you need to disconnect. Um, around the other side of the bike, there is the quick neck fitting for the fuel pump and then the harness for the fuel pump. So you will need to disconnect that. Obviously the fuel line you push up on and pull the collar and the other harness plug, plugs in right in that arena there. Um, you'll see it as you get the tank kind of lifted. So we're gonna run this whip down the, the backbone of the frame in between the channel there and then we're going to run it down to the battery so we'll uh we'll fast forward through all this fun stuff and come back and show you how we routed it all right so we're going to get up close um we lost a whole bunch of parts of the bike while we were away here um but effectively you'll see we ran the wire this is our harness wire here the braided one through this cavity plug. It's just kind of a wire guide and ran it down the tail. You'll see she pops out right here. Um, you will need, there's a cable guide under here that holds all of the uh, wiring for the compression releases and that, that stuff. So you'll end up just popping this guy out, dropping that, you know, plenty of room to pull it through. We used a fish tape. Um, I've seen guys use wire, uh, paracord. There's, you know, a million ways to skin that cat depending on what you have laying around your garage or shop so um we got it pulled out we put the relay or excuse me the fuse plug right here so under your side cover um with the rest of your you know technology and your your uh tender leads so and then just plugged her off to the battery we just need to recover the battery and we're good to go so pretty simple procedure there might be some cussing um you know if you get a clean shot at it this plug up here in the neck is kind of a, kind of a difficult at times. Um, done a hundred of them. It's, it's, you know, some of them pop right in, some of them you gotta fight a little bit. Um, nature of the beast, but uh, basically you're done. So for me, I would, uh, at this point, I would test fire the light, make sure everything works before putting everything back together. Um, all you need to do is key the bike on. So we'll do that here. Just make sure everything's copacetic and uh, we'll get, the bike button back up and we're done. All right, so this is your FX LRST fairing. Um, we have marked here where you need to trim, which is basically this vertical uh, face here. Um, it's notched here, here, and here. Um, that's actually for that goofy trim ring that always falls off. So we're gonna just cut this off. Um, there's a, a million ways you can do it. Um, you know, I. Uh, my, my choice of tool, obviously this. Um, you're gonna wanna use a fine metal blade so you don't get that rough, jagged cut. Um, but like I said, there's a lot of ways you can do it. If you do choose to do it this way, stop touching your motorcycle. I'm totally kidding. It's the last thing you should even come near your bike with. Um, that being said, I just used a, a drum paddle on my uh, die grinder and then cleaned it up with a small drum on the on a small dremel um so basically we're going to cut this out and that's all you need to do just make sure you take your time go slow like i said if, if you were to accidentally cut this whole thing in half it's going to cost 400 bucks to replace it not a huge deal um but there we are so all right so we use the micro dremel with a barrel um, we're about done cleaning this up. We got a little bit of a little bit of augering to do in there. 
but for the most part, you're there. Obviously, the level of detail you put in is uh, up to you. Um, if, you if you're the Sawzall guy, yeah, you, you'll get out of there quick, but probably not gonna look good. So, um, like I said, this is a very slow process, you know, depending on how much you care about the end result. Obviously, we care greatly, so we're gonna make it as clean as humanly possible and get it on the floor. Um, but we're getting there, we're about tied up. So next move is to uh, do the final sweep and clean up and get it installed back on the bike. Uh, we'll show you here momentarily what it looks like complete. All right, so now that we got the final cut done on the fairing, um, we're gonna put the outer fairing shell back in, which starts with this air duct piece or the uh, Rockford audio piece, depending on which way you've got it. Obviously this one doesn't have the audio, but the install is the same. You got four pins that lock in or clips get those lined up one two three four and then you just push them until they click and they seat so that's literally that whole portion of that we'll grab the fairing here and if you recall this is all t27 hardware so what i'm going to do is grab a couple of those bolts just so the fairing doesn't hit the ground unattended. And right over top of the right over top of the turn signals. Okay, snug the light in. We're gonna put the first two two twenty sevens just to. Hold on to the fairing here. Just remember there's this six going down the side. We'll just gently put that in. And we'll do the same on this side just to have that security. All right, so the last piece of the puzzle is to put the windshield back on. So again, I'm just gonna grab a couple of these bolts, get them started with my hands. We'll get the last of these in, and then we'll go ahead and do the walk around and torque everything down on my end. I'm not gonna bore you with that in the video, but it's a lot, a lot easier to get everything installed loosely and then tighten it all up once everything's started. So. And that's the whole puzzle there. Basically, you got your adjustments set, which obviously you'll need to do on your own. Lights in, and uh, we'll show you the finished product. There's your light, low beam, high beam switch, flash pass, and delay off.